Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Screen Chronicles. I'm Steve. With me, as always, is Colby, the friendly griffin. Today, we have a very special guest on. You probably know him as Uhtred's Irish warrior, Finnan, the man who makes grown men cry. <laughs> Mark Rowley on the Screen Chronicles. How are you doing today, bud? Yeah, really good. Thanks. Yeah, <laughs> good. Thank you for joining us, Mark. Uh, how's everything been going with you lately? Yeah, all right. Yeah, it's been actually really busy. Really? Uh, yeah, I've been. I've managed to set something up with a couple of friends, um, where we have a thing called the Actors Community. Yes, it's, it's like uh, you know, help teaching actors, trying to inspire people. Um, and then we've got kind of youths coming on as well. We're we're doing like a um, acting with uh, teenagers for like TV and film. So. It's actually been really productive. <laughs> yeah, so is that something you decided to start during the quarantine? I had an idea about it before. Okay. Um, yeah, I had an idea about it. And then as, as, as soon as quarantine hit, I was like, this is going to be lasting a while. Mm. And um, I was like, well, let's kind of do something productive because I was supposed to be doing some filming and I've, I just never have the time. So I was like, actually, I would love to give something, something back to people, you know, sure. help inspire them. So I've been quite lucky along the way where people have inspired me. So I think it's really important to pass on, you know, the baton, as it were. That's super cool. Uh, who are some people that inspire you? Oh, actors, Scottish yeah. actors, theatre actors back home. Um, all the time, that's always the older people I've worked with on set. It's sure. always the older guys who, who seem to have the most wisdom. And I, I suppose that is relative to any like profession mm. you know they've, they've been doing it for a lot longer experience, so yeah. they can yeah. give yeah the experience they can give me all the uh, all the good things and the bad things about the industry <laughs> and then hopefully i don't make the same mistakes and fall over like they did and then i can i can pass on that wisdom as well <laughs> you know? have you heard back from anyone who's been in your acting classes or heard anything that's like man you really helped me dodge a bullet or that you really helped me get into this um, more just like helping people uh, with self tapes. So like we have like lots of auditions and meetings as actors, and I've helped people get through to like final stages for like big parts, nice. which is really exciting. Um, and then just giving people confidence as well. I yeah, think yeah. during this epidemic, like it's very easy to lose sight, you know, of who you are, confidence, you know. And what matters to you? Actually, the opposite is probably happening is a lot of people are ended up joining the community and they'll be like, hey, I've always wanted to be an actor, but I've been doing this job for like 20 years. As like, and this time I've had a massive holiday, I've been furloughed, and I'm like, I want to do something with my life. Cool. <laughs> They're like, I think I think with time you're able to reflect, you know? Yeah. I think, I think that's worldwide. A lot of people are reflecting on their lives because they actually have time because I feel so sorry for all my American friends who are doing normal jobs because you only get two weeks holiday in a year, which oh, is yeah. insane. That is mad. So no wonder people are like, oh my God, actually, I kind of want to do something different in my life. That's, yeah, we, we both got sort of a recharge once quarantine hit because we were both jumping from different sites where we had to work and we were always a new guy somewhere. So it was, it was really nice for us to, at least, especially for me, to just mentally reset. And totally. yeah. It's been awesome. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, I want the, the pandemic, obviously, to be solved and everyone to be good. And uh, But it's been the free time. Uh, it's been awesome. Yeah, you're, okay. you're not going to get that again. So. <laughs> <No>. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. It kind of gave us a chance to focus on podcasting. And, um, and luckily, season four of The Last Kingdom came out during the quarantine. So that worked out. Yeah. Um, Gave us something to do and gave us uh, some avenues to explore talking to the cast. And we've had yeah. a lot of really great discussions so far digging into characters. Uh, we're definitely excited to, to dig into Finnan a little bit today because obviously, I mean, the show has so many great characters and so many mm -hmm. actors that show up and enhance the show. But I don't know yeah. if anybody's had such an impact since they joined the show as Finnan and, and you have had uh, on The Last Kingdom. I mean, you've became a lot of people's favorite character for sure. Oh, that's really nice to hear. I think he's, he's, he's such a fun guy to play. Um, and always trying to make the best of a situation. I think he's, he's kind of the, the guy who you really want on your side. He would yeah. track a, la uh, a laugh and a joke at the right time. But also when stuff kicks off, 
he's that guy that you want there. You know, we all wish we had a friend like Finnan. You know, oh, when, cool. when things are are tough, you know, just to give you that push when you need it. Yeah. yeah. One we of the things we really it. like about the show is all the the camaraderie. You know, a lot of shows I feel like there's only negative drama between characters, yeah. but on The Last Kingdom, there's there's a lot of camaraderie. Uh, between the people in Uhtred's group and things like that. And we always say best bro moments is what we, we've been labeling them as, is you know, oh, Uhtred, Uhtred and Fanon, or Uf, back is Uhtred and Leofric even. Uh, so yeah. but I, I think it really started to come in fruition like the second half of season two, when mm-hmm. you, mm-hmm. Clappa, Citric, Uhtred all start to form that first gang on the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Osford joins in too. Yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah, that's- so she big Magnus went away. That yeah. was what the hell, man! I it's like know. why? Why are you writing him out? That's insane. We it's talk like, the strongest man as well. Like he's, <laughs> he's such a great guy. He's the nicest guy I've ever met. If there's anyone you you meet in life and you go, I just want to be you. Like you are the definition of what all guys should be. We <laughs> had him on, and we um, we told him like, have you ever seen those Dosakis commercials? Um, have you ever seen those? They're like the world's the most interesting man in the world. It's like got this one. It's like a beer, and it has this one guy just doing crazy things. And that's Magnus Samuelson because he's he's like acting, he's weightlifting, he's going to all these different countries, like race everything. car driving, race car driving, man. shooting rifles. It's like everything. <laughs> and the, and then he'll just come up with like come out with a random story about how he saved someone's life, and you're like, what? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> just so casually, you're like, what? This is insane. Yeah. <laughs> you awesome. you uh, got shoved by him uh, in season two when you guys were playing Stones. And it's one of my favorite moments when uh, yeah. he goes to Rush to tell Uhtred the, yeah. the news. What was it like getting shoved by former World's Strongest Man? <laughs> well, I didn't really think about it until then. Like, it's probably better than being punched. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is, a, he is a gentle giant, though, so... For sure, I forgot we that about that game stones. Yeah, that what's it called? Game. Why do you call it stones? stones. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do you call it stones? Yeah. Oh, it's really, like, we nearly broke the camera with that actually. Like, so yeah. I had to put like a plastic glass in front of the camera just in case it was gonna, uh, just in case it hit the camera. And they were like, no, it'll be fine. And then at one point, it nearly did hit the lens. Oh, oh my God. Now, it's would like, you have had to pay for that or what? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> insurance, that's what the insurance is for. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's not my paperwork. Um, yeah. But yeah, that was that would have been a lot of money. That would have been over 100 grand easy, man, for one Ooh. of those lenses. They were just... <sighs> yeah. Anyway, it didn't happen. Yeah. Well, I mean, we had we also had Chaz Bain on, and he explained about how in like battle sequences, he would run through. He wouldn't want you guys to think about him or whoever's yeah. the camera operator. And mm-hmm. so I imagine you guys got pretty close to to hitting cameras and stuff frequently in those battle scenes. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I suppose like most of the time when the camera is there, they will. Um, really, it depends on the camera operator. To be honest, it really right. does depend. On the camera operator we did have one who was working with he was the main camera operator on game of thrones as well mm-hmm. and so he was used to like jumping in front of horses and stuff like that and crazy stuff and he would be like yeah just d- just do your thing and i'll get out of the way doesn't matter and you're like oh, okay just, yeah. he, he was a crazy irish guy he was crazy. oh yeah <laughs> like, he's a really fun guy yeah sean yeah um but I, but I suppose running around with a camera and looking at the world through a lens as you're running can be quite like disorientating. I can imagine. I bet. I bet. You know? Yeah. And then I get slashed with a sword every now and then just, uh, there's a few good either, I bet. But <laughs> yeah, totally. The plastic goal, the plastic. The plastic. plastic. All right. It's but uh, <laughs> how did you get involved in the last kingdom to begin with? Um, yeah, just, uh, it was just an audition. Like, okay. yeah, an addition, and then a recall, and then I think it was another recall, and then that was it. Yeah. Now, I think I heard you audition for season one. You know what? I was looking through emails not that long ago, and of all, like, things I've auditioned for and uh-huh. various other things. There's many, many things out there. <laughs> um, and most of the time, they'll send out, like, 
scenes and you don't know much about the project because they're trying to be like top secret about it all. Mm-hmm. Although everyone kind of knows anyway, you know, it's one of these things like you can guess. But um, yeah, I ended up going, going through my emails not that long ago and ended up going up for a part, actually. Yeah. There's a guy who ends up just getting killed by Brita with a bow and arrow. Oh. Um, I was like, and it went really well. The director was absolutely, I forget, I think it was the Peter, the, what, Peter anyway, Moore. That shit, yeah. And uh, he was rolling around the, around the ground with me, with the camera. I've never had anything like it, but I think he's quite an eccentric guy anyway, so yeah. I just went for it. So maybe maybe they, they liked the idea that I just went mad in the audition room and they went, okay, he's not right for this, but let's get him in for something else. Well, thank God you didn't get that role. And die yeah, no. in, se- in season one. <laughs> yeah, totally. The guy didn't even get a line, but hey, I'd have probably put a line in there anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I, I think what uh, sort of sealed the deal too with us and Finnan uh, was a, was a great line after the getting off the slave ship and getting freed by Ragnar, and then you go up to the the last surviving slave owner, and mm-hmm. and then when you kill him and you say pull. And you, yeah. you take the sword out. Oh my God, we were we were off our seats, man. We were watching it together in grad school. Yeah, and we oh. went nuts when that oh, happened. Yeah, yeah, we went nuts when you did that. Only I only had uh, one one take in that one, so I had to oh. make sure that it was good. It was. Oh good, yeah, man. Oh, pressure building up the pressure. I was like, right, no one ever lets you do this. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of. Pre- it's got to be a lot of pressure when they did you know before going into it, you only had one take. You, well, you can kind of guess, really, and you can s- suss it because, I mean, you, you just get the mood of the set, and when you've only got five minutes to go in the scene, you're like, okay, right, I need to pull this out of the bag straight away. I just need to go for this. Gotcha. Okay. And it won't. Gotcha. So, yeah. Sometimes pressure does make you do a really good job. Oh, yeah. That's why we would and- wait till the night before uh, paper was due. So we we hear several times from Finnan uh, throughout the three seasons. I think one time we hear that you knew Uhtred asks if you knew your father. He says, "I knew my father's fist." There was another moment in season three when you mention um, like the the nun reminded you of your mother because she was also never wrong. Mm. Uh, so could you tell us like how you envision kind of Finnan's backstory before we meet him as a slave? Well, I've been just going by the books. Mm-hmm. Really, that, I suppose that's the really nice thing. It, it, that, that's a beautiful thing about this job, and at the same time, it's like a double double sword, I suppose, because like you have all the backstory there for your character, so you don't really have to invent that much. Right. And actually, it's really nice to just read about him and go, "Oh my god, that's so exciting!" And then the author tells you how he feels and all the inner thoughts he has, and you're like, "Okay, I kind of have an idea of how this guy actually works, thinks, and." Okay. Actually, uh, goes through life. Um, but then again, I'm one of these guys that just gets, I get right in amongst them. I'm like, I'm so passionate about telling my character's story that, you know, with the nature of the TV show, we're always pushing, you know, there's always a narrative to just keep going and going and going. So the subtleties get left by the wayside. So I have an idea of what Finnan is, but I don't know where it's going to go. Right. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So and I think that's it. And I, probably a lot of people had that experience with Thrones and stuff as well, you know? Like, they have an idea of where it's going to go and then the writer would, like, just... And, and then they season were eight all happened. wrong in season eight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> where they <laughs> wanted their character. <laughs> what the hell? What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned, yeah, so you have an idea of Finn in your head and congrats on the announcement of season five. We're very excited oh, yeah. about that. Um, where would you like to see your uh, Finn and go? Like, what would you like to see from him in season five? Um, season five, I suppose, like the un, um, revealing his past, hmm. I would say, because actually, he's um, he has a similar story to a certain degree to Uhtred, and I think that's what brings them yeah. quite close together. Um, and you get that from the books, right? So, he's, he's a very mysterious character from the books, mm-hmm. um, and there's a sadness there that you never really know about, and actually at some point that does come to light and you find out this story that you probably would not even imagine. Really? So he's, he's a very, um, yeah, he, he, I think he, he's just a mystery. 
But whether or not, again, they explore that, I don't, I don't know if the what's going to happen there. Yeah. But um, if they do, I think that'd be really exciting. We just cool. finished the first two books uh, mm-hmm. from the series, and then we're in the third now. And we're, yeah. we're, we are seeing some things that are done differently. Uh, some things we like a lot more, and some things it's like, oh, they like Ethelred is the, the cousin of Uhtred. Uh, that was yeah. never mentioned in, in the mm-hmm. show or anything. Not saying that's, that's a bad thing or anything, but it, it is interesting how the show will take it um, too. And you wonder, is this going to come up or not? Yeah. yeah. But I suppose that's a good thing as well. Like, you yeah. know, then everyone is surprised. Exactly. You know, so the people reading the books, they expect something, actually something else happens. So it's, you know, it's, it's all fun. Yeah. yeah. As long as they don't get killed off straight away. I would really like it if Finnan, if he was going to get killed off or had to oh. be part of the show, he would just go on a boat to Ireland. That, that would be it, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like something nice. I feel as if <laughs> everyone just goes horrifically. It'd be like, it would be so nice at some point. He just goes, do you know what? I'm going to, I've had enough lands. This is great. I'm just going to head back home. <laughs> Season oh, season four man. especially was uh was really brutal. I think with some killings, like uh, Ethelred's head got twisted to death, and uh, uh, Scapa's head got blown up, and <laughs> that was mad. People's heads, man, it was nuts. And uh, yeah, and then there's Spiaka too. Spiaka oh, as well. It was shocking, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, his wasn't bad though. He was a guy I wish, like you just said, he could have had an ending. I was just happy and. Of course, he had probably the most tragic ending, losing his yeah. wife and then, and then getting shot. But um, I think Ian wanted to die. He said if he was going to leave the show, he just wanted to die of a, a foot infection. Like it just <laughs> like something really mundane that actually back then people would like die of. Like they would just get a cut or something and then it would get infected and then they'd get a fever and die. Just something really stupid. Or an ingrown nail gone wrong. Just, I'm just imagining this now. There's just kind of like a, a talking scene and he's walking and he's just like, oh, ah, stepped on a rock. Sorry, continue scene. Two episodes later. <laughs> Gang green leg. Oh my God, it's infected. <laughs> yeah, totally. Oh man, that's, that's hilarious. So do you remember your first day on set of The Last Kingdom? Uh, yeah, it was really, yeah, I remember my first day. It was really... Um, was it the first or second day? Actually, I think it was the f- the first day, and we were uh, going through a field. Like, I was on a horse, and I was just going through a field. Okay. And it was really beautiful. I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe I'm actually getting paid to, like, trot about on a horse and through oh, this cool. cornfield. I'm like, what? This is, this is so weird. This is great. <laughs> I can't believe this is my job. That's awesome. So your first yeah. day wasn't on the slave ship? Because that's when we first meet you. Um, was? Yeah, yeah, interesting. Okay. I think we done it. We shot it like out of order and stuff. Out of order. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. So when we first meet you on the slave ship, um, very quickly we kind of learn, and I think a line you sing in season four really embodies who Finnan is, uh, mm-hmm. where he talks about the Irish being stubborn and yeah. says, even when it seems impossible. And that's really exemplified even back when you're on the slave ship. Uh, yeah. Could you talk a little bit about some of those early um, scenes when you were a slave? Um, yeah, so I think uh, that that was really fun filming that for a start. That was so fun. But for the character of Finnan, I feel as if um, I played it, and I've, I've always been playing it as if there is some sort of revenge he's trying to enact later on. Mm. Or he's fueled by anger and rage. Okay. And uh, I think with the BBC version in season two, it was interesting because I think with the non, with the, the edit that um, Jamie was going to do, the, the director, uh, my good friend, actually, it's his birthday today, so happy birthday, Jamie. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, at, at one point, I, I had this idea of expressing his anger and frustration of his life on the battlefield, you know, where him hurting someone is him hurting the people that have actually hurt him in life. Mm. The people have taken power away from him. And actually, it's a, th- a form of therapy. And it's really weird. There's so many guys out there like that today, probably yeah. throughout time, you know. Someone's given them a really hard time, and then they just take it out on someone else, which is really sad. But yeah, yeah. I think that happens a lot. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so uh, I was playing around with that idea in the slave ship. 
or just that that uh, using the anger as some sort of endurance to get to get through it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's interesting because people don't talk about like especially just now with you know um, what's going on in the world and yeah. the, with slavery and a lot of history has been hidden hidden away. Like it's interesting how I suppose now there'd been there'd definitely been more talked about. I think that scene because of what it ended up that oh, I suppose the Scandinavians really kicked it off in Europe for for slavery. You know, oh, that's interesting. Just taking anyone, uh, Dublin was so Dublin was created by the Vikings, and that was the main trading port for slaves wow. in Europe. Oh. Very interesting. Yeah, so Dublin was nothing before, and then Dublin was created by the Vikings. Wow. There's loads of places like that, and yeah, and in and, and England and parts of yeah. Scotland as well, where the Vikings ended up coming and either settling and doing trading posts or massive, massive uh, trading towns, trading cities. I don't think people realize the extent to which the Vikings influenced cultures oh, all over they, the world. Yeah. Uh, it's amazing. Yeah. For sure. Bad. Mostly good. I mean, they did do a lot of bad, let's be honest. Like, mm-hmm. But actually, they ended up bringing a lot of technology that we didn't have before. Sure. Just different ways of life, even influencing laws in England as well, you know? Yeah. Paper laws. Yeah. And that's a great thing about the, sh- uh, the Last Kingdom is it stays pretty true to a lot of the history. And we've learned a lot of history by watching the show and starting to read the books. And Bernard Cornwall does a great job of kind of letting us know what was real and what wasn't at the end of the books, which is pretty cool. Um, are you into, it sounds like you are uh, pretty into the history. Do you do a lot of the research? Um, hey, yeah, I, just, I love, I was listening to something there, Dan Carlin's Hardcore History. Okay. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my God, it's amazing. But yeah, I love hearing about people's stories, you know, um, and about history, learning from a past. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I love it. I love it. And I, I know quite a lot about, just because of the show, I feel as if I should know more than anyone else. Okay. I'm going to go do a Vikings-esque show, then I should probably know a little bit about it, just in yeah. case someone starts quizzing me and I feel really embarrassed. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, I should probably know that. Yeah, <laughs> like, luckily, I'm not a, a historical character, so I get away with it. But right. if I was a historical character and then I didn't know a lot about that person, I'd feel very embarrassed. Yeah. Is there anything that you picked up in like your research of the time period that you brought into Finnan specifically, whether it be his personality, whether it be his actions or even something maybe he wears or anything like that? Yeah. Uh, I would just say that I always make reference to my cross. Sure. So I think the religion at that time was, it did cast a lot of fear Fear, well, fear and positivity, because it yeah. was not a great time to be alive. Let's be honest. Mm. <laughs> was so much going on. It was such a hard, hard life back then. And you had to deal with harsh winters and various other things. So I think that idea of actually there's something better than this can uh, give hope to people. But also on the flip side is that if you do something bad, that's you. You're in hell forever. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So there's this person at the end of this journey who's going to judge you and decide whether or not you're going to be a VIP or you're not going to be let in. <laughs> <laughs> we get to see more of Finnan's religious side, I think, in season four. We get to see him holding more of the cross and, and then your prayer even. Yeah. Your, your prayer before the battle, which we heard from Sarah that, that you found somewhere. Was that, was that, where did you find that and what made that uh, inspire you? Um, I just wanted to try and find something like to see at some point if I could put it in. I was, I, I was this idea of finding courage within yourself. And I feel as if, you know, there's a lot of people out there who do look up towards God for uh, confidence or they look towards a higher power when they feel weak or they need some sort of um, a confidence boost. Right. You know? Right. Like, and we go, when we go through hard times as humans, like we do, you know, the amount of pictures you've seen people in devastation, all these pictures in the Middle East, you know, there's been bombs going on everywhere. And everyone's just looking up to the sky being like, what the hell, help yeah. me or whatever. And it's the same thing. It's, they experienced it just as much back then, you know, yeah. that thing of in time of need, you, you need 
you to have an idea that someone's watching over you or potentially is going to look out for you, then that's the thing that's going to get you through it. And even though Finnan loves fighting, I think he loves getting in amongst it, but there is that fear, you know, sure. especially back then. Like, God, they're like, what, what we do is they, they shield walls were terrifying. And we don't really <laughs> depict that properly in the show. No. I ended up doing a lot of training with like Viking reenactment groups here in London. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. And a proper shield wall is quite scary. It's about holding the line, re- like tactics, and those spears, man. Like, Ooh. And those the long axes, we don't have them in the show, but the long axes coming over. just Coming bang. over? Ooh, yeah, really tall, just coming in to hook a shield down so someone can get a spear and thrust it through your body. It's really brutal, you know? <laughs> and as well as that, going for people's legs, because if you go for someone's leg and they can't stand and that's down, they go down, people trip over them. That's one thing they emphasize in the book, the shield wall, is, is Uhtred would use uh, wasp sting to go for the legs, hmm. to go for the groin in the shield wall. So maybe yeah. that was a little bit more realistic to what they would have done uh, back yeah. then. It's interesting. Yeah. So it's mostly how, like, you would the spearmen and the long axemen would be doing most of the work. They'd be doing the kills. Okay. And then your swordsman, he would be helping holding the line. So say that someone managed to break in and they managed to break the distance between the spearmen and the axemen, it's really hard for the spearmen to defend themselves when they're really close in against someone with an axe or a sword. But that's when your swordman, your right, right-hand right man would come in with his sword and shield ah. or his axe and small shield. And so he would protect the spearmen. I think uh, uh, like Battle Ethington really, the first season, Battle Ethington, I think it really kind of made you feel how gritty and especially when they separate the lines and just the yeah. bloody field in between. Yeah. That was yeah. Nuts. yeah, yeah. It's kind of like that. Yeah, it's definitely like like that for sure. That's um, crazy. And, and as well as like what I learned was from the Viking guys, where it was, it's, and they mention it in the books as well, like the armor and these Vikings coming over, coming over and attacking the UK. They had the best armor. So yeah. have, essentially, you would have a tank, a man tank. <laughs> Who, if you tried to like stab or thrust, it wouldn't go through the chainmail. Oh my god! So you would have just have this massive beast of a guy just swinging axes, and people try to take him down. They can't. The only thing though that can potentially break the mail is spears. Okay. A really good thrust in with a spear. So that's what we've, that's what we've heard from Arnus that <laughs> from you're Arnus. you're pro spear. That you're a, you have a I strong have, affinity for spears. I want to, Yeah, I'm desperate. I'm just like. Why are we not using spears? They use spears all the time. <laughs> hey, you play with one, I think, in season two. I in know. the background, you're kind of messing with one. Maybe that's you trying to give them a sign to get it in. <laughs> yeah, totally. In the books, they always they mention how many like swords and axes and spears and Finnot has and stuff. I'm just like, oh my god, come on, give him, give the guy a spear. This is so cool. Yeah. And you can do some crazy stuff with it. I love that that battle in Troy. Oh like, that one is fantastic. The Achilles. Yeah. Achilles one and Hector, oh, yeah. yes. the spears and stuff. Oh and my god, that's a crazy. We fight. love that movie. Yeah, mm. Brad Pitt's as Achilles in that movie is amazing. His yeah, it's apt are unreal as well. I don't know. That. <laughs> yeah. Come on, that's the CGI or something. I know. Did, did you hear he uh, he tore his Achilles like in that movie he, when he was jumping out of the boat to like go when they were first charging the beach. Apparently, like tore his Achilles there. That is absolutely hilarious. Playing Achilles. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy i'd be probably scared for his life that's a sign <laughs> oh man that's awesome you have this knowledge coming in you you seems like you do a lot of extra leg work to learn about what you're doing on screen uh what are what are some things you've learned from that you've already mentioned a lot of things you've learned from it, but any of it transfer into the show from these uh, like vikings yeah. training groups yeah 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 for sure um some of the guys that have uh, ended up doing it with it's just a shame i've not managed to train with them recently or because of the whole virus situation but mm-hmm. um yes some things they ended up showing me and I've, I've managed to use it or trapping swords in a certain way okay it's been, it's been really useful so um cool. i would love to explore more like fighting with shield and sword at the same time yeah they, how they do it is just absolutely amazing 
but oh, that would be quite cool to explore that in the show. That's cool. Where do you do those Viking? Uh, those oh, there's quite, a few, there's quite a few places in London. There's a few uh, in York in England. Um, there's one in Scotland, I think. And then there's so many in like Scandinavia. Oh, they love all that stuff over there. You know? It'd be awesome to see if there's any over here. Uh, uh, yeah, I definitely want to get in the shield <laughs> wall. 100 percent there will be. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, because they do these massive festivals and then everyone goes to like either Sweden, uh, Denmark, and I think there's a massive one in Poland as well, these festivals, and they just get together. They call it Volen. The one in okay. Poland, the biggest called Volen, and it's like 500 guys against 500 guys, and everyone is wearing <laughs> male armor and everything, but everything's blunt, and the, the, it's like a gentleman's agreement when you get hit, you go down. Gotcha. So it's that kind of vibe. But I imagine there's quite a few people who maybe have anger issues and they still <laughs> maybe get carried away but um yeah I've heard, awesome. heard a few stories where maybe people have been really hurt but most of the time it's safe yeah and, and actually it would be so fun but a lot of the guys are pol- uh, a police so they've done the whole um you know riot squad you know okay um, so they're kind of used to that shield wall mentality of working together as one. <laughs> I definitely want to see uh, uh, another huge shield wall thing though in season five. I, I hope that's uh, so. I love the battle we got in season four, uh, but yeah, I yeah. think another great shield wall would I think be would be awesome. Yeah. I think it'd be exciting if they're going with the books and the historical events. Then there's a major event that will happen, and if they do that, that's gonna be absolutely fantastic. Ooh. Okay, Shoes. we don't know what that is yet, so we'll. <laughs> hey, definitely. And I've not said anything. I've only suggested something, like, and most people have access to the internet, so I can't get into trouble. That's Absolutely. the thing is, no, you, can, you can spoil it by looking up the history. I, it's what yeah, yeah. They, they didn't even try to to hide who Ethelstan was. They were just like first yeah. king of all the English, right here and, on yeah. the screen. <laughs> yeah, and that <laughs> makes his character more interesting too. Now that, that's an interesting thing you bring up, Ethelstan too, because Finnan has like a really cool relationship with with Ethelston. Even before yeah. you realize who he is, mm-hmm. you've already uh, taken a liking to him. Uh, do you have a, a good relationship with, I think his name's Casper Griffiths? Uh, did you guys yeah. kind of bond in yeah. real life too? Yeah, he, yeah. He, um, just on set, yeah. Yeah. Just fun. I, I'm, like, that's the thing with our job. Like, we're all big kids at the end of the day. Yeah. Like, we are really pretending to be people. Like, when some people just get a bit too caught up in it, I'm like, hey, guys, remember, we are... Pretending to be people were not like serious doctors or like you know, um, so, so yeah. But yeah, I suppose he brings out a kind of well. See, everyone is kind of childish on set, and he, everyone is so playful. Yeah, but, yeah. I think that I just like having a laugh on on set, and even when the camera is rolling, it's good. And especially with young kids, I, I think they're a bit. They're definitely more fearless to just try stuff and do stuff. Which yeah, is great, and they don't think about it. Yeah, Mo- mostly the younger they are, the more they're like that. Actually, they're just like, yeah. I don't care. I'm gonna do whatever the hell I want. And you're like, yeah, <laughs> do that because that's really good. That's good. That's really good acting. That's what you want to do. And then you keep everyone else on their toes as well because they're like, what the hell is this kid gonna do? This is great. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. That was one of my favorite episodes where the Uchid gang uh, and all the kids that Stuart was looking over, and, and it's in your guys quarantine episode when you're kind of Lord of the Rings traveling everywhere. And mm-hmm. that was, that was a really fun episode, but ultra fast walking. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Super fast. You guys were a cross country team for a while here in season four. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I know. I know. <laughs> if you weren't in shape before you were after, I'm sure. <laughs> that's crazy. But you, it's interesting. You bring that up too, Steve. Cause I mean, that, that episode really hit close to home i mean obviously when you filmed it you guys didn't realize what life was going to be like in 2020 yeah. um and finnan especially is the germaphobe the one who's seen what a plague can do mm. um, could you talk a little bit about your approach to kind of that style i suppose i was just going with the idea that the director just put in my mind that um he, he said to me earlier on that he that finnan had seen this fever before in his family and that, yeah. that was, there was just a real fear there that he doesn't want to go the same way. Um, so I think he put that into my imagination. I just kind of kind of ran with it. That was it, really, you yeah. know? Because um, it's awful. These plagues were absolutely terrible, especially yeah. like later on. 
in 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 life, you know, in terms of going into industrial era era just mm-hmm. before that, like at the London plague, and that was absolutely devastating. What ended up yeah. doing, you know? Yeah, it's crazy. Um, it's just it's, and it's mad as well how obviously we have a and a plague or well, epidemic just now, you know? Pandemic, yeah. So, um, it was yeah. like when you like uh, I think Steora sneezed and you like panic looked at her and uh it was just like that was us whenever anybody <laughs> sneezed during the first month yeah, of totally. oh, dude it's so relatable it's like yeah totally uh, and it, i think the thing is no one really picked up on it or in, any memes and stuff like that which was actually because i was like oh my god what the heck yeah it's like oh this really is touching close to home here you don't want to be you don't want to make a joke of it yeah you're, you're like you know you don't be, yeah exactly so i was like oh okay thank god that no one did yeah yeah not yet i think maybe in the future they will i don't know let time go by i don't know yeah. but uh either, either that or the writers seen it coming we're like mate you've seen it in your mystical ball you're <laughs> in there you know could have given us a warning beforehand <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, that, was, that was definitely interesting, relatable in a different kind of way for Finn. And I mean, we relate to him in a lot of ways. And one thing um, that really, I think Steve said, you make grown men cry. And one example of that is the hug, we call it. The hug you give Uhtred yeah. in episode three after uh, you're consoling him about Bayaka and everything. Um, mm. Maybe talk a little bit about how you approach those emotional scenes. And I mean, you gave a lot of pep talks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh... I think it's nice that the show in, ended up going there because I think it's very relatable. A lot of people have said the same stuff. Like, because it was only two scenes, two or three scenes, maybe. It's actually in the big grand scheme of things, it's not that much. But um, I think people relate to that, especially guys, you know, because you do have to portray that kind of macho-ness or bottle up your feelings. I know that's what it's like in Scotland anyway, that West Coast scotland mentality of no you're a man don't yeah hey don't cry don't cry macho culture Ma- yeah macho, uh, doesn't matter and actually it's nice to just let that out and be um and, and, and like expose your feelings you know and I, I remember like seeing the you know the f- first time seeing my dad cry whatever it's just so oh, yeah. like, oh my god like this person who's you know my protector is upset and crying what Oh my God, you know, or totally. just opening up the soul a little bit. It's, it's such a profound thing. And I feel as if we've got to probably encourage more of that in society. And, but it'd be nice to explore more of that in the show. And, um, and in terms of doing it on the day, I think that was just quite easy because, you know, Alex and myself are good friends right. outside of work. So I think it's quite an easy one to put out there. If, you know, if your friend was in trouble or someone in their family passed away, like you'd want to be there. To totally. that person, you know, yeah, and and then make a joke about it and try and get them back to where they were. Absolutely, you know? I think mental health is such a huge thing just now, and it's and it's really nice that people are just talking about it, and it's now becoming not a taboo. It's actually people are starting to register it, you know. Yeah, yeah you should you should treat it like like an injury. You know, I I had depression. I had I had an ankle injury. You know, you yeah, you, totally. you overcome them. You go get treatment. You do what's best. That's how I think it should is how it should be viewed anyway. Hundred percent, hundred percent, yeah. But that's what we really like about Finnin is, uh, and the rest of the group that they have this camaraderie that they are the badass warriors. You know, they can kick your ass six ways a Sunday, but then mm-hmm. they they help each other out. They get each other through that lump t- as well and uh, come out on the other side. And uh, that that's something we really you know love about the show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and as friends watching it, we could really relate to those moments that, that you guys have. I mean, another one off the top of my head I think about is even with Bayaka, like after the fire, uh, when Finnan goes up to him, he's like, I'll get the body. And he's like, no, I should. And you're like, well, we'll help you then. You know, it's just those little things yeah. Yeah, are, totally. that hit us here. They hit us here. Yeah, t- <laughs> like, totally. Yeah. totally. I suppose I'm trying to think what. It's very much like that kind of army feel that's out just now. Or what you guys have in America, you know, that SEAL team. Vibe. So team six, yeah. Yeah. But it's like, yeah. Well, it's definitely like that kind of brotherhood that they're always, they're out for each other and they're there. And I've got yeah. a few cousins in that, cousins in the army here in the British army. And they're very much like that. Like, these are all a family. Yeah. You know, and you're only as good as the man next to you. 
Yeah, interesting. Like, and you guys are like SEAL Team 6 too because the way you guys stealthily go into places. I, I know, <laughs> I think beginning the second half of season two when you guys sneak across, um, oh, yeah. like help save a village, and then obviously getting into Bebenbur, um, kind of pull on that Shady Gangan style Shadow Walker <laughs> vibe that you guys got going is really... Yeah, yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah, one of the, one of the big things we thought was really cool was when you were breaking into Bevenbur, the the way you guys worked on the levers and getting through the gate. Like how mm. how did that work? Did were you making a real lever or how did that go? <laughs> yeah, actually I think oh, I'm trying to remember that day. I think there was some problems in actually trying to construct how we get in to Bevenbur. And actually, it was like we were planning it as we were going along almost. So it actually worked wow. really, really well. Yeah. Um, it was so, a really cool scene. So Yeah, yeah. We, ma- we managed to like all kind of help out and be like, actually, if we take these oars and do this and wrap that around, then we can lever it up. And if we get everyone behind us, then we can probably push it up. And we're like, oh, my God. Yeah, we've managed to fix a problem. <laughs> you know? They're men of science. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally totally that's awesome well, sometimes it's the- really hard though it's sometimes really hard pretending to um like uh make something extremely heavy ah. like when we're trying to push something up actually you'd be surprised of how how much you can tie yourself out <laughs> like what, how the hell is this doing this how am i, how am I actually tire myself out by faking this <laughs> But maybe it's the brace and everything, and it's those isometric contractions. Yeah, it's isometric. It's Steve, Steve and I are uh, physical therapists, so we. <laughs> That's how you know better. Isometric contractions that you're probably just holding there. Those Full body out, too, well, to make Full it body. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's fascinating stuff. One thing we talked to Arnis about that he said is kind of how Citrix sort of defined by his fighting style, in a yeah. way, or he has a certain um, specific one for him. How would you kind of uh, explain Finnans? Now, I, a few things I recognize with Finnan is the double blade action yeah. that he yeah. kind of goes with. Could you talk a little bit about the style that you bring with the fighting? I think we just went for a sword and blade so that we can get used to trapping and this idea of blocking and continuous thrusting mm-hmm. and stabbing. So it's, you're constantly moving and can defend and attack at the same time. Um, my a stunt, um, a stunt guy who's fantastic... Uh, he is trained in uh, a lot of like a Japanese kind of warfare. So a lot of his things is like one, one slash one kill where personally I'm like, Hey man, just get in there. Brawl fight. It's a brawl. This is every, every fight during this time was survival mode, like bash and kick and whatever you have to do to survive. Totally. So, we always find a middle ground between us and we work on it together. So I feel as if like we share the character of Finnan. And we can, cool. he'll come up with a really cool idea, yeah, and then I'll come up with something, and he'll be like, oh my god, why don't you try this? So actually, it's like we, between my, my, my stunt, my stunty and myself, like, we create the part. Yeah, cool. Two brains are better than one. That's great. Oh, 100%. 100%. That's awesome. And I think in the book, it's Finn in the Agile, he says he was called. Yeah, it's it- Finn in the Agile, but I don't really, I, don't, I feel as I don't get a lot of Agile moves, and I'm not, I'm not stretchy at all. No, <laughs> definitely not. Do you mean in the strong? But there's definitely some agile moves that I can do. But I think the only thing is the moves that I want to do. Are I go here, guys. I I learned this one, and I'll, I'll do a thrust. And oh, yeah, like, yeah. yeah, it's it's too much. It's too placed, or I look too um, Spanish, or you know, <laughs> free flowing. And I'm like, no, come on, let's do it. Like he's. He loves fighting. Let's just do it like it's a dance of death. So yeah. that's what they call it in the books. I'm like, let's do it like that. But I think sometimes they're like, ah, maybe you're, maybe it's a bit too much. Maybe it's getting into Marvel. Marvel X. Uh, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay, yeah, fair enough. Let's, let's try and be realistic. You're right. You're right. You guys must do so many takes, though, and um, for like a big battle like that, that, you know, who knows what's get, what gets in and. Yeah, we, we don't know what it gets in. Sometimes you're just doing it and doing it and doing it. And I think when it comes to the edit, I think everyone's a bit surprised. Um, but that's just, that's the nature of it, you know. Yeah. I think it's very chaotic. It's, it's a really hard one for the director 
and it's, a, it's, a, it's so stressful for the director because they've got so much to cover. You yeah. Know? So you'll learn this routine and all that, and then you might get to do it, if you're lucky, maybe two times. Yeah. Um, and then it's on to the next thing, on to the next thing, you know, just try to build up, try and get as much material as they can, so if, just in case they need it. Yeah. I think it was really well done, though. I think it came out really awesome. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, totally. The, the stunt coordinator, Levente, he's amazing. He does yeah. a lot of stuff. He's, he's very, very talented. So for most of the time, we know we're going to have a good battle scene purely because he's involved. Cool. Yeah, that's awesome. And one thing we were talking about, I think at the end of that battle, you guys look, you, you particularly, you guys look just drained of energy. Just totally yeah. dead. So that's that's just a cool little aspect you put in. How, that was the first time we got we got to saw like after the battle. How's everyone like doing? Like after, immediately after the battle, like hours of fighting, yeah. someone trying to kill you. Like, and that's what you looked like. It was just like, oh my god. Totally. Yeah, I think because I think it would be like it'd be so exhausting. I think it'd be really nice at some point to like um, express that even more because moving in mail and armor is. Oh my heavens, man! That must just be draining. Yeah, you know, to get to move units across a battlefield, like you're going to deplete the energy so much, you know. Totally. So I think after when all the adrenaline and everything's gone, then people are absolutely like shot, done in emotionally as well. So yeah. it's nice that you, it's nice that you picked that up. Another thing we noticed you mentioned about you know being draining with with the gear and everything on is that Finnan decided to go sleeveless for like. Yes. The second half of the season. Um, and we talked to Molly Rowe and we just kind of asked her about that. And she said that you had a thing where you wanted to be shirtless or something. Like, Yeah. I, in hu- Hungary, I sh- well, I should say it's set in England, but definitely in Hungary, it's so hot. Yeah. It's so hot. So then I'm always like, well, if I'm hot, my character's hot, then surely they would try and like, why would they, why would they be wearing armor all the time? Whatever. Like, yeah, I'm sleeves. Like, yeah, they'll be making their life hell. Like, so what would we do? Like, either a thinner shirt or we just cut the top off and get the guns out. That's it. <laughs> so I was really, I was really, I was really happy I managed to do that. I think, I think Aris was gutted because he has bigger muscles than me. He's like, God, I had a chance to show my, my muscles. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I've said it, I've stated it, his, his are better than mine. All right, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> do you have any specific like training physical that you do for the show versus like what you do on your own or anything like that? Uh, so I've just started again, like uh, working out for just for prepping for season five, and it's just so draining. Yeah. Like, um, I like the eating part because a lot of people struggle with that. I'm really good at putting on muscle. I'm really bad at losing weight. I just, I love food. So, yeah. it's really hard the other side. So, um, yeah, I, start, I started that back. Uh, I started back the other day for that. Um, cool. It's quite, it's quite tough to put your body through really intense workouts. But actually, I've realized like once you're three weeks a month in, then you, you're back to where you kind of wear. Oh, yeah. So is your goal to try to bulk a little bit? Uh, I think so. Like, it's interesting. I think as the scripts are coming out, it's just trying to be a bit flexible to see what's happening. But I have an idea of where I want to take them if we are aging up ever so slightly this, this yeah, time around. Then I've got a couple true. of ideas, you know. But yeah, I think everyone has probably suffered from lockdown diet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought it'd be worse. I went the other day and it wasn't as bad as what I thought. Okay. I was like, oh my God, I'm not going to be able to lift anything. And actually, I think all that sugar I've consumed is, <laughs> all that energy was there. And I was like, yes, it's not as bad. But today I'm like, oh my God. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Just everybody in season five kind of has a, a, a gut. <laughs> Just yeah. everybody, everyone. Though. Everyone, everyone. <laughs> like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> We've been feasting, feasting. Yeah, they call it the dad bod. They're like, yeah, we're all grown up and all yeah. that. Yeah, if you had to do it like that, when method, no. Method. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. Uh, another moment in season four that I love, is just real quick, is that Uhtred almost kills you uh, in Bevenber. It really helps to amplify oh. that he was sort of, sort of in this headspace of like, nothing really matters, Bayaka's died, I'm not yeah. getting Bevenber, and he's in total rage. 
and you kind of know that's about to happen. Could you talk a little bit about um, doing that little bit right there? Yeah, I suppose it was just about getting uh, Utrud out of that situation. So we just were trying to, like, at the time, and that's what I was saying, like, now and again, we'll all collaborate. So the stunt guys get involved and they show roughly what it's going to be like, and then we can pitch in our ideas. And Alex is really good with coming up for ideas and, you know, enhancing a situation, making it even better. So I think at that point, we're just kind of playing around of how we can uh, sell Utrud being completely out of it. And I think that slashing, ah, rage can boom, just conveyed it ever so slightly. You know, yeah. that he is lost, he was hurt, he's full of anger, distress. Um, so, yeah. But it's nice that you picked that moment up. It's a really small little really piece. Small. That's cool. Well, was Finnan expecting that from Utrid when he approached him, or was that something oh. he just reacted to? I don't, I don't, we're, we're going for the bit where he just reacted. So, yeah. You managed to expect that, then I've probably done that wrong. So. <laughs> no, no, it just, um, <laughs> no, it was just a great moment. But uh, it, was, it was crazy. Um, it made you feel like Utra's just rage, just that berserker mode oh, right there. Oh, yeah. brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, it was an amazing scene. And then you just carry him, you push him out. And I love the moment. And I think you're the one yelling pull as you guys are going away. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Um, they show Utra on the screen, but obviously you and him were slaves together. Mm. And my God, is that moment powerful because all the Last Kingdom fans are thinking about when you guys are slaves and, and that phrase pull. Yeah. Um, it really, and this is now Uhtred's new rock bottom since he was like a slave. Yeah, it's totally. Super, totally. super well done. It's nice to, I think that's the good thing about those characters is I think when you've shared a traumatic event, then it, there's like a natural bond, you know, because mm -hmm. people have seen you at your that person's seen you at your absolute worst, you know, when you had nothing to, nothing to live for anymore, you know, and I think when you can help someone out of that situation, then we just can help each other out of that situation. There's like a bond. Totally. Whether or not he's grew, if he's grew apart or whatever, like there's always going to be a, a respect or a bond there, you know? Yeah. Totally. I love that scene after Ragnar saves Utre and the rest of you after slavery. And you're sitting around the fire and Ragnar asks, Finnan, are, are you his brother? Yeah. And you say, yes, we are bound. It's, oh, yeah. my God. Oh, my God. That was yeah. awesome. Now, another thing, obviously, we talk a lot about your warrior side of you, your brotherly side, friend side. But the funny side of Finnan is another thing that the fans love, that we love. Mm -hmm. And a couple of scenes in particular are kind of the banter with Steapa. Yeah, yeah. Um, could you maybe talk a little bit about doing those? Maybe the first one when uh, you guys are outside of Uhtred's house. Yeah, it's just really fun. <laughs> yeah, like, I think it was really good writing. I can't remember who ended up writing that scene, but I think it was really fun and it showed the characters off perfectly. Yeah, you know, because um, he does have that little bit of Conor McGregor vibe about him as well. <laughs> yeah, <you know? laughs> yeah. It definitely does. And when, when I took that part on, I was like, "Yeah, man, this is like a Conor vibe, hundred percent." Yeah. Um, so I, I do think he is up for a laugh when he can get it, and especially having a drink, because he knows how short life can be. Mm -hmm. I think back then, I think people, I think that's why they were so reckless, and actually they did do wild stuff, because they're like, do you know what? I'm going to die soon anyway, I might die tomorrow. Yeah. Because people are just dying all the time, of like, not in battles, but just of mundane, pointless stuff. Like Why step on a rock? rock. <laughs> yeah, I just... You know what I mean? Yeah. The, amount of, the amount of kings that just go riding on horses and then, oh my God, the king's dead. He fell off the horse. <laughs> through history. Just Things Cheowulf's like, eating dinner with Alfred trying to negotiate a bride price and <laughs> just totally. died at the table. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Crazy. I think I, think I was reading a, a book rec uh, recently and, and um, yeah, a Scottish king ended up getting thrown off a horse. I think an English king as well. There's just... <laughs> Accidents happen yeah. all Accidents the time. Yeah. Totally. Totally. Now, do you ever, is it ever hard to keep a straight face when you're doing those scenes? And like, you, you again, a couple times later on, you could also have some banter with uh, Steapa yeah. um, later on. Um, sometimes, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, sometimes um, but most of the time, um, most of the time I can keep a straight face. Okay. Most of the time. Yeah, and do you ever bring anything yourself in it, or is it all scripted usually? Or 
Uh, one thing we've heard from other actors is that you're a pretty innovative guy. You're a guy who brings a lot of ideas to the table. Yeah, I like to try and find something. I've got a thing of, I like to try and find something that I didn't, I didn't even know uh, was there before. Okay. To discover something I didn't even know was there and then find it in the moment or surprise the other actor with something and then it gets them out of their head and then they, are, they do something else and suddenly the scene's just a little bit different, you know? Can you think of any examples of that? Oh, I kind of, I feel as if I do, we do it quite a lot, to be honest. Okay. Any scene that we come up with, it'll be like, right, okay, what are we going to do in this? What do, what do we want to show? Like, how can we show the characters off? How do we want to do it? Is there anything that we can add to this scene? Because sometimes you'll get scenes and it's just a plot device to get you on to the next scene mm -hmm. or explain to the audience what's going on, but... Can you put something in there that's different? Or like, um, I might, wait, the one with, in that season there, when we end up doing the trick, it was like a trick at some point. Yeah, it's in, yeah, it's in your mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was just supposed to be a scene that we end up just, it's, it's us just chilling out, relaxing. So I think I was supposed to be just polishing a sword or something. Oz first was reading... And I'm not too sure what Citric was doing. It's just a, an, an, an establishing idea to be like, we've been there for a bit of time. So that's yeah. all that, that's there for. And I was like, look, why, why can't we do something a bit fun and show something off with the characters? Yeah. So Andy, he, who's a great director, I was like, here, Andy, can I show you something? Like me and Honest, we were was like, here, let's, let's work in this Honest. And Honest was game for it as well. Because Honest is really creative. Mm -hmm. And um, we're like, here, let's work in this and sh show Andy. And so we've done it. And then he was like, yeah, that's great. Let's do that. <laughs> so That's awesome. But, but because he's got so much experience, it's quite nice that he can go, okay, right. That, all right, I can film it differently. And he can, sure. and he, with ease, he can go, right, I know how to film this because I've done so many TV shows now. So, and he can just film it where yeah. some people might be quite precious and be like, no, because I want to do this short, this short. Yeah. But, that's um so it's, it's very, it's all dependent on the creative team around you. So if everyone is up for having a laugh and exploring new things, it's great. Yeah. Then I think everyone is just really on it and fun and playful. Yeah. Well, I think, yeah. yeah. The, first, the first episode too, I really like uh, of season four. Just, it, it's really fun. I think it's the most like happy episode out of the whole show at any point. I mean, when when you guys come back, you know, uh, you know, women of cook them. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> and then uh, I, I really like to, it, in, to me, it feels like it's more of an impromptu moment, I guess, when uh, you, Citric, and Osforth are, are talking about we're not dressing up as nuns. Was, was that yeah. in the script? Oh, yeah. um, no, that, that, was in the, that was in the script. Um... The ladders bit, we improvised stuff about, I think there was something about ladders. Yeah, whatever. and you guys just walk away, I think. You yeah. Just like look at each other like, not <laughs> even worth a response. Like, yeah. <laughs> There's just like little moments we'll put things in and they might use it in the edit or they might not. But yeah. I think mo most of the time, actually, we're quite lucky to do. Because if, if we have fun and we entertain each other, like of banter, like lad banter, yeah. the audience are going to like that as well. You know, and I think it's so important to show that because if it's, if it's dull all the time or serious, like I think one audience will be a bit like, oh my God, where, where's, the, where's the hope here? But there has to be a reason why guys, these guys hang about with each other all the time or they want to survive and live. It's because actually they have a really good time with each other, you know? Yeah. And it's shown thing. through those little yeah. moments too. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, exactly. It's to show it, yeah. That's cool. Another one I'm thinking of now is just like, um, I think there's one in season two where you like half pull your sword out. You do like the, the finger wag. No, when somebody starts coming at you. And then there's one with blood hair where you just put your arms out after Uhtred brought skate out. Do you remember doing that one too? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just like those little things. They're not, they're not that important, <laughs> but it makes us love yeah. the character, you know? Yeah. yeah, totally. Totally. That was really fun doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Talking Connor McGregor. I mean, Connor McGregor. <laughs> Channeled, channeled me. He was he took over my soul at that point. Oh yeah, then the fight too. Uh, when Uhtred's fighting Blood Hair, and they're sort of being unfair. The crowd is, and I yeah. did like oh, headbutt yeah. a guy and throw Uhtred his sword back. And yeah, yeah, that's cool. It was, it was an awesome mode. 
Yeah. But, um, Obviously, we're just a show filled with awesome Finn and moments. Do you have any particular favorites? Uh, favorites? Um, I really like working on the slave ship. That was a really fun, yeah. say, fun day because it was almost like a, um, it's almost like a theme park ride because it was like on a crane and oh, okay, and this green screen all around, and then you would look outside like the little keep the. Like the the little where where the bit the ore is. Do you know where yeah, they yeah. put the ore in? I don't know. I don't know what technically you call that, but anyway, the ore hole. The ore hole. Ore hole. Right. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Here we are. Well, well done, Mark. Jesus, man. No hope for next season. Anyway, um, ended up looking through that, and then there's just like a there's a just a massive fat bloke there, just with a cigarette and a, and a hose <laughs> and a wet hose, just doing that. <laughs> just spraying the side and, I, and those moments it's really hard to keep a straight, straight face you're like oh I can see England and then you're like oh my god I can see more than England <laughs> like it's that it's casual it's casual it's great it's so funny nothing like getting uh, you into and the- yeah just I think the times when we're just all having a laugh as guys like and we're really embracing it. Like I loved the moment where in season three we we had the battle, the winter battle, and I think it was like oh, yeah. episode four or five. Yeah, and that was really fun. And I think we we're running out of time, and it was just like, just God, do we've only got five minutes left? Just do whatever, just keep going. And honest and myself didn't know what shot we were on, so we're like, right, then a close up shot because if you're close up, you might it might just it might look as if you're attacking someone over here, but you can't see it. Right. So then it's all in your imagination, but the camera will pick something up. They'll pick up your intent and they're imagining you attacking someone and they might use that in the edit or whatever. So honest myself thought they were really tight in a close-up shot, but actually they're really wide. Okay. So basically it was just us just like pretend fighting. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, it was like, yeah. <laughs> we're like, what the hell are you doing? What are you doing? I was like, well, I don't know. I don't know. And then we just started like fighting with um, just the supporting artists as well. Like, yeah, yeah. Fighting. And a lot of them didn't really know what was happening. So they would just fall over. So I think we killed like 30, 40 people just easily just doing this or that. Just I'm having sure a day. Honest went, went, walked towards one of them, they just fell over. I was like, <laughs> this is actually amazing. So you're I'm, using your mind. You're killing them with your mind. <laughs> <laughs> totally. So hopefully there's outtakes. I would love to see the outtakes. Oh yeah, that'd be fantastic. That'd be oh fantastic. man, that'd be great. Another moment, you guys do a tug of war when you're up at uh Dunholm with Ragnar. Yeah. Uh, did you guys actually were you guys actually yeah, going? Man. Yeah, we went oh, for yeah. it. Yeah. Were you gonna were you gonna win? I think it was actually I think uh, I'm trying to remember. I don't think we ended up winning. You know what? No, well think- they cut it. Ragnar yeah, cut the cut, rope. Yeah, they cut the rope, but I mean, like, we were doing it for real. Like, they would oh. do it for real. And then before that take, um, the guys were really cool, actually. They would play, like, hardcore rock music. Nice. So, like, so Get while you. we're in between takes and all that, it's like... So we're just... It was such a great atmosphere. And they're like, okay, ready, action, cut the music. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> it's just going mad. You get this awesome speech by Ragnar, the oh frog licking Saxons, and then the... yeah, I think he's my favorite actor. I think he's definitely oh. my favorite. Yeah, we'd love to talk to him. Yeah, we love uh, oh. Ragnar on the show. Is yeah, and so he's a big... lovable character. Such a lovable character. Yeah, he's a really nice guy. Like, more really important though, he's such a nice guy. You know, mm-hmm. um, and I think that's the lucky thing about our cast is actually everyone is really nice, and we're all friends outside. Which is actually quite rare, I think, where people stay in touch and are and are friends outside of work, you know. I mean, yeah, and everybody's been so friendly who we've interacted with too, from the cast and crew. Uh, I think you're, I think, our twentieth guest, and everybody we've talked to has just been so nice, so kind um, yeah. in our interactions, which is which really awesome, really totally yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah. So who who then uh, besides we talked about Tobias? Who else do you wish you had more scenes with, or who do you really enjoy doing scenes with, or both? I, I really enjoy uh, Ian Hart. Like he's, mm. I think he's a phenomenal actor, um, and I love his physicality and how he approaches his character and the uh, the scenes. Um, so I feel as if when I work with Ian, I, I learn something every time. That's what so, I think. Harry said that 
Yeah. So Harry said it. Somebody else, I think, said that too. Yeah, he's very much on it and he's honest and he's just open and out there. Um, and it's just great. You're like, oh my God, wow. Like, and he'll go from, I think it's just experience though, isn't it? It's like anything, I suppose. Sure. Like, he'll be talking about that moment that he's, when his wife was trapped in the house and it was mm. getting burnt down and all that. And he runs towards the house and he's, he's got tears and rage in his eyes. Like just before that, he would just be like chatting, like about anything, having a laugh. You're yeah. just like, this, he's going to have to go and do this scene. And they're all getting ready, set up for the shot. And they're like, okay, turn over, sound. And you're like, he's still having a laugh. And then action, he's just like, ah, ah. And it comes out of nowhere. You're like, wow. You can just turn it on like that. That's, Dang. Yeah, that's insane. But maybe, maybe that's a little thing. So you, you don't think about what you're going to do. So actually you're like, okay, action. Oh my God, I'm going to do whatever. I don't know what I'm going to do. And that's really exciting. <laughs> That's one I, thing I found. In, go ahead, Steve. No, I I just imagine it'd be very difficult. I mean, I, I know acting, you know, is is how you yeah. would I guess accomplish it. But uh, especially Finn in two, he does a lot of yelling in season three into the charging and and stuff mm. like that. Uh, I just feel like that'd be really hard. To, I guess to reel that in when you're when you're sprinting, like especially down the hill at the end of season yeah. three towards the Danes and just yelling and just I've like all right. I've got a technique for that though because. I learned early on, because you get carried away, you can get carried away with it all, and you start to lose your voice, and that's the worst thing that's going to happen. So yeah. actually, what I end up doing is I, I pretend, so it's like, uh. I'll do whatever, I'll shout, I'll maybe have an idea of what it's going to be like to start, I'll have a couple of goes at it, I'll do it, but, so I don't get carried away, I'll, I won't put any vocal energy in, in it, unless it's a close-up or a mid-shot. Gotcha. Because if you do it, like you're doing it for a week, you're just going to lose your voice. And you, if you get some actors coming on who are only doing it for a couple of weeks, their voices are absolutely done. Because you do, you just get wrapped up in it. Especially when you have like 200 extras there, like you forget you're filming. It's just like, I'm in a battle. Oh my God, what the hell's happening next? Ah! <laughs> you know? And then you're like, wow, that was amazing. But then when you've done that 50 times, you're like, oh my Oh my god! <laughs> but hey, it'd be really nice to play that next season of going. Actually, I can't. I can't. <clears throat> can't talk. It's realistic. <laughs> it's right, I can't. I can't <laughs> scream at this battle. All right. We're... All the soldiers for the week <laughs> after a battle probably didn't have voices. In time. Yeah, totally. I'm gonna put. Let's try and put that in. That's a great idea. We'll come up with that together. Hopefully, That's we can awesome. put that in. Yeah. <laughs> and we can be like, look, that would happen all the time. It'd be really realistic. <laughs> well, that's so, fantastic. Then. That's fantastic. One thing I noticed about Finn and he's got a pretty sweet costume mm -hmm. um, and he's got like a ring. He's got a few rings. One's a spiral. Yeah. I'm curious if there's significance to that symbol to him or if it's just something he found on somebody or. Um, I think Molly, she wanted to do a Celtic, keep the, a strong Celtic vibe. And I wanted that as well. Okay. And if, if I could at the start, I really wanted Finn to have uh, Celtic tattoos and stuff. But yeah. I think it would have been so similar. I can see why some people are a bit, hesitant because it would be it's, it's so similar to what the vikings would have the danes yeah um but then again i would be like well it's finning it's finning yeah the irish are different to saxons you know they are their own different tribe mm -hmm. um and they've got their own culture as well and yeah. scotland was like that very much like that as well you know um there was like a merge of christianity like from paganism to christianity there's like a, yeah. just a little bit of time and there's like a strange merge it's interesting with finn and i was going to ask you about how you view his spirituality it's obviously he's christian yeah yeah he's not when you look at the other christians in the show he's not as like off-putting about he's not as religion. pious he's not as pious and yeah. uh, how do you view his spirituality um i think it's for things like uh for he's looking for forg forgiveness and strength mm -hmm. I think that's what it is. And I, I don't think he, def, he doesn't agree with, you know, um, with the Danes and what yeah. they end up bringing to the picture. But I think he's very much the, guy, the kind of guy where, you know what, if I'm, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to scrutinize anyone, scrutinize any other person's religion or whatever, whatever works sure. for you, works for you. I think he's quite flexible and he doesn't ram religion down people's throats, you know, 
right. but it's more for his sake that he is religious or there's that idea we talked about of a better life, mm-hmm. forgiveness, you know, he's definitely full of a lot of sins and he does, he does have a lot of darkness there. And um, I think that's where his faith comes into, you know, to give him some sort of strength. Interesting. That's another aspect of the show we really like is it's, it's fun. It's interesting to see the two warring sides of the Danes, their pagan religion versus the, the Saxons Christianity. But then Uhtred just has everybody in his group. He, he doesn't, he doesn't yeah. really care. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose I think what the British try to get is, is he's the epitome of England. And actually, yeah. when you look at it, we are going through a really interesting time because we are leaving Europe. But arguably, you could say that England was created because of Europe. Mm. And actually, without the Danish invasion, we would have probably been something else. Hmm. You know, it had such a massive effect. I mean, you probably, I don't, would we have had America? America would have been different, you know, because yeah. like yeah. of English people, uh, well, people from Britain going over to the States, um, you know. Just the uh, chain reaction of things that happened yeah. after that. Yeah. Totally. Would, yeah. Would Alfred have been able to get everyone behind him if they didn't have this common enemy to fight? That was. Yeah, for, for sure. Yeah, Great for point. sure. And, and it was a, like all the kingdoms, but I think a lot of people, they don't know that. Uh, especially people in England, you ask some kids, like, how did your country come about? And they're like, well, I don't really know, which is actually quite sad. Um, and there was several kings back then, you know, and hopefully we experienced that this season coming up of, like, how the kingdoms managed to unite to form England. But, yeah, there was, there was the, the whole UK was divided, the whole of it. And then the only, the only way the UK came about anyway is because of, the King of Scotland inherited the, the English throne and then united yeah. England and Scotland, Wales and, and Ireland. Mm-hmm. So it's interesting. And then from that point, everything just grew and then the empire started to grow and blah, 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 and war with France and, you know, you name it. Yeah, yeah. We, we didn't know about Alfred uh, with being real. I think, I think we didn't find out, Colby, correct me if I'm wrong, that that whole side of it was real until like the end battle when they show the date at Ethington. Yeah. The first season, we were like, oh, shit. And we were like looking up and like, Alfred and real. And, uh, and a lot like, of the battles are real. Even the Battle of Tetton yeah. Hall this season was a real battle. And yeah. And a lot of people we spoke to who were English didn't learn about it in school. And it's just like, it's yeah, just crazy. It'd be like if I didn't know about George Washington. We didn't know about the Revolutionary yeah. War and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Because like, if he lost that, Wessex would have probably been succumbed to the Danes. And yeah, we would, we would, yeah, we, we would have been a, uh, a part of Daneland. Yeah, we would have been a part of Scandinavia. Basically part of their empire, as it were. And then later on, hundreds of hundred years later, then I suppose we started, do, the UK started doing that to other countries, you know, building up their empire. But we would have been part of the Danish empire for sure. How incredible is that story? Yeah. Coming up from the nothing. I mean, Alfred had something and then go to the swamps. Yeah, it's it, almost like too good to be actually true, and then it is true. Yeah, it's mad, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's, it's really, really interesting. Um, and it, and it, especially later on with Ethelstan, I think his story historically is fascinating as well, because everyone, every other king in the the, the UK, even in Scotland, started um, uh, started. Um, I, th- I think they swore allegiance to him okay. yeah. and then sovereignty wow. actually so cool. he he took so much control at that point he was like yeah okay this guy is the man yeah you know, I, can't wait, I can't wait to see him on the show i can't wait to see that i know yeah well hopefully hopefully they go that way I, I, i've not read i've not seen the script yet so hopefully they do no yeah, yeah I, I i'd imagine they would though just from the history and the way they way they showed alfred and how incredible he was i'm, I'm sure they will but it's amazing how one family can change so much, you know. Wow. You know that, and, and and it was really nice. They ended up exploring Millie's character a lot more. Yes. Um, because historically she was really important, and actually back then, I feel, I feel as if this is a great time for you know empowering women, and she was actually so influential <laughs> in English politics. But yeah. again, no one really talks about it, which is actually quite sad. They should. It's extremely sad. Yeah, it's it's. Learn about it in schools. You should. 
should at least learn about it in schools. So that's another great thing the show does. And we didn't, obviously, we had never heard about Ethel Flood. Mm. And looking, we've done a lot of research on her since, and it's incredible what she's done. Yeah. Mod. You know? So, so Mark, um, any goals for you as an actor moving forward? Um, yeah, I, th- I think after after uh, Last Kingdom, it'd be quite nice just to do things in normal clothes again. <laughs> but, so, and yeah, um, there's a few things, extra things com- coming out. Uh, I was doing the Spanish Princess there, so that's coming out, and I get to play a, a Scottish... Um, a Scottish politician. Cool. Don't know how much I can talk about it, but yeah, that's quite cool. That's coming out soon, and that was really fun. And then there's a thing I ended up doing uh, with Colin Farrell. Um, uh, Northwater? Yeah, Northwater, yeah. Um, yeah, Eliza told us about this, yeah. Yeah, so that's going to be an interesting one. So me and Eliza will be playing completely different characters. <laughs> so that'll be really fun in, the, in a different mm-hmm. show. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's... That's what's coming up uh, next. And then after that, I think um, I really enjoy America. So I might, might go over to America for a bit. Come on over. Yeah, <laughs> Come on over. Sure. I, really, I really love it over there. I really do think you've got a cool vibe, uh, especially California. I love California. More the coast, though. LA's, a, LA's like... hard. LA's very, there's, there's so much traffic, man. Yeah. So much traffic. Until but... Elon Musk drills a tunnel under the city. Yes. So he said yeah. he's going to do that. No, he says he's going to do it. Fantastic. Do you know well, I don't know if he's actually going to do it. He's going to try. I know Dude, that. he's taking us to Mars, man. We don't have to worry about traffic in LA, man. No, I really want them to do the traffic in LA, LA first, though. It's such a, <laughs> I think it's such a shame. I guess it was. Go, I guess that goes back to, back to the times when they probably had the infrastructure to build up a really good um, transport system in LA back in the early days. Um, and then probably people got paid off to, you know, from the car companies to just be like, no, no, it's just, let's yeah. just make cars, mm-hmm. which is so, so sad because London is all public transport first and then the car is second, or actually it's probably a bike now and then a car and a yeah. mobile. You know, it's yeah. so fast to get around the city. Really? Where in LA, it just takes so bloody long. You're like, oh my God, if he's had an underground, it'd be so quick. Yeah. Well, I think Eisenhower, right? It was him who first started designing our, our highways and really got that going because he wanted tanks to be able to mobilize throughout the country. Kind of like how the Romans did. That's why they were successful, their roads. Oh, yeah. Well, um, so he's to blame then. He's, I mean, yeah, he's, he's the one to blame. Things, but <laughs> God save man. Underground! Underground! <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, cool. Steve, is, do you have anything else? No, is, but is there any specific genre or anything that you, you really want to work in? I, I just saw some clips from you, uh, that movie you're in with Daniel Radcliffe. Uh, looks oh, like yeah. a crazy mohawk and a chainsaw going on there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was really fun. Uh, called Guns Akimbo. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, it was, that was a great laugh to do that. I think I really like eccentric characters, so anything a bit different and out there and it's got a story to tell. I'm a massive like Band of Brothers fan. Okay, I so, just started watching that. No way, have you seen it? I've, I'm up to, I think four, episode four right now. Right. Man, that's, that is crazy. I mean, winter, show the world. winter. Better than Last Kingdom. Oh, me, it's so good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so good, it's so good. When he yeah. designed that, the battle plan to t- how to attack the, the artillery, I was just like, man, like, People were crazy. I mean, we. I always just look back in the past. I'm like, people were always like better and cooler in the past, man. Like they're just mm. like, man. Yeah, they're it's, a, it's a great show. <laughs> I think they were. Yeah, and I think they were so present with each other. I think that's the good thing about the past. Like, you, there's something really nice. Like, I, I didn't have my phone the other day and walking around, and it's just like actually quite liberating in a way, just to be like, oh, I know. wow, I can be, I can be really present. Yeah, I can look someone in the eye. I can look someone in the eye and just take them in. I'm like, wow. What? What is? This is great. Yeah. Um. I think they managed to do that a lot back then. Um. But I. I think yeah. Some war movies and stuff like that. But I would love to be a part. Like do something like Band of Brothers would be absolutely. That would be. Oh, you would kill on something like that. That'd be awesome. I think they're doing. What, they're, they're doing one. They're def, They're doing. A, a, I think they're doing one that's concentrating on their air division. I think. Which. 
will be interesting. But let's see if that actually happens because obviously, yeah, uh, everything is up in the air because of the virus. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah, I feel, I feel as if you've asked loads of questions for me, and I feel very rude not asking you guys questions. No, but, we're not interesting you're at all. You're our guest. You're our guest. <laughs> I know. I just you know. You're our guest. Hey, no. if you if you ever want us to come on your Last Kingdom podcast, that's fine. Yeah, you know, we'll, we'll, do that. <laughs> we'll do that then. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. Well, yeah. Mark, we really appreciate you joining us today. Uh, we really had a great time uh, picking your brain a little bit, and uh, we wish you the best with Last Kingdom, your other projects, and and especially the actors community thing, because uh, that's we'll that been really too. cool to see you helping well, out a lot of young actors. Um, yeah, very very cool. Um, yeah, we'll link all those links down below for, for Mark. And uh, we'll also link for the Screen Chronicles. We hope you guys will follow and subscribe and like. Um, we're on Twitter now, so check us out there on Instagram and Facebook. Um, but Mark, anything you want to say to the fans? One last? No, thank you. Thanks for keeping me employed. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for it. I'm having a great time, so hopefully it stays that way and Finn can go off on a boat into the sunset. <laughs> yes. We'll hope for that too. <laughs> totally. Right, all the best. Thank you so much. Yeah.